Welcome to A Word for Wednesday. Thank you so much for joining us. Each Wednesday, you will find Boggs Family Ministries is here with our host, Davey Boggs. Having you along with us is a wonderful addition. Now, let's enjoy together A Word for Wednesday. Thank you, Brother Devin, and thank you for joining us today on A Word for Wednesday. I hope everything's going great for you this week. We're having a wonderful revival in Colquitt, Georgia for Brother Jonathan Prickett at Mount Olive Holiness Church. Great, great services. Expecting more of the same tonight. Let's take a moment to talk some more about this false prophet situation. I talked to you last week about how, how do you know a false prophet? And the Bible gives us two very easy tests for a false prophet. One is if what they say, what they predict does not come to pass, they are a false prophet. Done. That's it. That's, that's the test. Test number two, now we have a false prophet who prophesies and what he says does come to pass. He predicts some world event. He predicts some happening, the result of this, that, or a natu uh, natural calamity of some sort, and it comes to pass, but he preaches contrary to the word of God. He teaches differently about God than the Bible does. He teaches things contrary to the word of God. He is still a false prophet. Doesn't matter who he is, what his name is, he's still a false prophet if he preaches false doctrine. We need to put that in our minds. That is, that's not judging, friends. That is an accurate test that God himself, God himself gives us. Why is that so important in these last days? Because in the last days, false prophets shall arise. Jesus tells us that in Matthew 24. Paul talks about it. Peter talks about it. False prophets shall arise. Well, what's it hurt? Well, what it hurts is they lead people astray. In fact, John gives us a warning in 1 John 4. Beloved, believe not every spirit. Don't be gullible. That's, that's, that's what bothers me probably more than anything right now is how gullible our people are. They will run after almost any type of prophet. Preach them the truth, they won't accept it. Give them a lie, give them something far out, prophesy some conspiracy theory to them that takes 10,000 people keeping a secret and they'll swallow it, hook, line, and sinker. But that's not the way it's supposed to be. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God. How do you try them? You apply the test that the Bible gave us. Are they true prophets? Try the spirits, put them to the test. One lady in a service that I was in charge of many years ago, she wasn't interested in the preaching whatsoever. She was in and out, up and down, not interested in the preaching. But once the altar call service started, she wanted to prophesy to everybody. She was out prophesying to all the people I'd been preaching to as an outdoor meeting. And then she comes on the platform, wants to lean over and prophesy into Odie's ear. Now, Odie being a handicap, she's a target for all sorts of things, you know, people wanting to pray for. That's, that's fine. I mean, but I'm always very careful to try the spirit. So she comes on the platform and I just step between her and Odie. And I didn't know her name. I said, sister, are you wanting to prophesy to Odie? And she just kind of looked at me very stunned. Like, yeah, I said, let me stop the music and you can prophesy to her in front of everybody. We all want to hear it. Well, that, that shocked her to death because she'd never prophesied openly, always in secret. And she turned around, left the pulpit, left the service, left the grounds because she didn't want her prophecy to be judged. But Paul is very particular. 
Let them prophesy by course. One, two, three, and let those around judge. The spiritual gifts must be operated in a manner that is cooperating with scripture and in agreement with scripture. And so how do we know that? We test it. We'll judge it. And John reinforces that. Try these spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Try the spirits. Put them to the test. Let's see if this is real. Upwards of 40 to 50 prominent Pentecostals prophesied that President Donald Trump would be reelected, would serve the next four years from 2021 into 2025, and that Joe Biden, now President Joe Biden, would not be inaugurated. 40 to 50 prominent evangelicals, most of them confessing from the charismatic movement, all of them Pentecostals, prophesied. It's like a frenzy of prophecy that he's gonna be president. I've waited a long time to say this. We're now in March of 22. President Joseph Biden has been president for well over a year. The election's been 15, 16, 17 months ago. Joe Biden is president, Donald Trump, former President Donald Trump is not president, that makes all of those prophecies wrong. That's just, now I know some are saying, well, he's president in heaven. No, no, he's not. Did you want him to be president? Would it have been better for him to be president? Well, the gas pump says maybe it had been better. I don't know. I'm, I don't want to be political. That's not what this is about. I'm sorry to even make that remark. Listen, friends, this is, it's not about politics. It's about false prophets. He's going to be president. I started watching right after the election. What, what are they going to do? Some of them backpedaled and said, oh, I didn't really say that. Some of them said, yes, I said that, and I was wrong. I, I, I commend those people. I was, I was wrong. Most of those guys didn't get much press, not after a week or two because you know they weren't interesting anymore. I made a mistake, I'm wrong. That was kind of heralded at the beginning, but then they left that. But some of them, some of them stayed with it. One particular prophet, when I was sick last year and had a lot of time on my hands, I began to study things he said. I watched videos from the day after the election, the week after the election, all through November, December, January, February. He was still proclaiming Donald Trump will be president. Joseph Biden will not serve as president, he will not be inaugurated. Don't, don't get distracted by what the world is saying. God said Donald Trump will be president, will continue another four years, not elected later, but will continue the next four years. In fact, he said, and I transcribed much of this, he said, if Donald Trump does not continue in his presidency, if Joe Biden is inaugurated as president, I am a false prophet. That's what he said. He said, I am, my ministry is ruined. Well, I checked recently. He's still prophesying. He's still, he's still preaching. People are still following him. They're, in fact, he's got more followers now than he did then. They're flocking to hear him in public meetings. He said, I didn't say it. He said, my ministry is ruined because I'm hinging my ministry on being a prophet. And if, John, if, if, if Joe Biden becomes inaugurated, I'm ruined. My ministry is over. Well, I checked the other day, a year later, all those videos, of course, have been taken down. I've got links to all of them. All of them are dead links. They're private videos now. I transcribed many, many, sat down and typed out many, many, many of his statements through November, December, January. And then even after Joe Biden was inaugurated when he kind of avoided the subject, I still wanted to hear what he had to say. That's false 
prophet. We should mark them. Will I name them? No. Uh, this is not about exposing people. I'm, I, I'm not, that's not my ministry. That may be somebody's ministry. That's not mine. I'm not here to embarrass people. I'm not here to name people. I'm not here to call people out and, and you know, expose them in front of you. My purpose is not to hurt them. My purpose is to help us. We need to know them that labor among us. We need to put them to the test. Are they real? Ahab wanted to go to battle. First Kings 22, he got Jehoshaphat to go with him. Jehoshaphat said, let's, let's, let's inquire of the Lord. Ahab had 400 prophets come in and they all with one consent said, yes, go to battle. You're going to win, man. You're going to win. The, one of the guys even got some horns he fashioned out of iron and illustrated prophecy. He said, just like, just like I'm pushing these horns, you're going to push the enemy away. Jehoshaphat said, is there anybody else? I mean, he's got 400 guys prophesying love, peace, and chicken grease. Everything's going to be great for you. Jehoshaphat knew. He knew this wasn't right. Something's not ringing true here. Do you have another prophet? Ahab said, yeah, I have one guy, but I hate him. He always prophesies evil concerning me. And Jehoshaphat said, oh, don't say that. I can just imagine, oh, no, the sky is going to fall. The roof's going to collapse. If you talk like it, don't say that. So they went and brought up, went and brought up the prophet. And on the way in, they told him, said, now listen, all these guys have prophesied good. So you just fall in line. So Ahab said, should I go up? And he said, yeah, go ahead. You're going to win. Must have, must have said it very sarcastically because Ahab said, how many how times I have to tell you, don't lie to me, tell me the truth. And so the prophet Micaiah said, you're going to go up, but I saw all Israel scattered without a leader back to their house. And Ahab said, didn't I tell you, Jehoshaphat, he always prophesies evil concerning me. He said, throw him in the prison. When I come back, I will deal with him. And Micaiah said, if you ever come back at all, the Lord didn't send me. Wow. <laughs> throw him in jail. When I get back, I'll deal with you, boy. Yeah, if you ever come back, then the Lord didn't send me. I don't know what happened to Micaiah. Did they keep him in jail? When Ahab got killed, did they, did they keep him there because Ahab didn't come back or did they celebrate him as a prophet? We're not told, but he was a true prophet. These others all piled on. They all wanted to be on the winning side. What happened here? We read it. Micaiah tells him, the Lord said, I need to get Ahab to go up to battle so they can kill him. What can I do? And one of them said, I'll go down and put a lie in the mouth of the prophets. And the Lord said, go. They went down, put that lying spirit in the mouth of these prophets. 400 of them rose up and said, yeah, you're going to win. It was a lie. And remember last week in Deuteronomy, when they were testing, showing us how to test the prophet. One of it, one verse there said, this prophet prophesies so that the Lord might prove you. He's a false prophet, but God allows him to prophesy so that he can tell whether you're really true to God or not. Listen, we, we ought to take really close, pay really close attention to that, friends. All this proliferation of false prophet all over YouTube, I'm sure all over Christian television, all over the media, prophesying, prophesying. They go from this to that. To, how does anybody believe them? Because they're always prophesying about, prophesying about something and they're always wrong. Yet they have this, this frenzied, cultish-like following. We need to pay attention to that, saints. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not preaching to them. I'm not exposing them. I'm talking to my brothers and sisters. Saints, we need to be careful because God may be proving us whether we really follow him or not. 
Are we going to be swayed? Are we going to be deceived? The very elect, are we going to be deceived by these false prophets? Here is Christ. Here is Christ. See him in the clouds. Listen to him here. I've got a new message. I've got a new life. Oh, friends, take the word of God as your guiding light. God will guide us through these difficult times. We do not need a new light. We need to refocus on God's truth. Is prophecy real? Of course, prophecy is real. Are there modern day prophets? Of course, there are modern day prophets. Any, any, any hypocritical thing that the devil has is an imitation of the real thing. Yes, there are real prophets and real prophecy, but I'm not sure we can hear them because we're focused on so many other things. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they be of God. For many false prophets shall arise. Let's be true to God's word. Watch closely for the signs that God gave us. And listen to the true prophet. He may have a word for you that gives you some guidance, but reject all this mess. We don't need it. We do not need it. Well, I hope that makes sense. Makes sense when I say it to myself. Thank you for joining us. And we'll see you next week by God's grace. Thank you. That is our word for Wednesday. We are so glad that you've spent a few minutes with us today. If you've been touched by today's episode, please share it with your friends and family. We welcome your questions or comments below or by email. You can find the email address in the description, along with a link to Mile Markers, the website for Boggs Family Ministries. Also, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Thank you again, and we hope to see you next Wednesday.